Hi folks and welcome to another show by me, that Tassie Wargamer, I'm Darren and uh, just a quick and prompty one today, I've, um, I've been doing a fair bit of painting over the last well, three or four weeks um, but haven't done any much basing, uh, uh, varnishing basing and then um, dull coating so I finally got a fair bit done today only because we're going to be getting rain over the next few days so I thought I'd better get in and, and do the, the, when I say dull coat, not testers, but I'll get to that. Um, but doing the the flattened flattened spray. Um, so I'll just take you a, a, have a quick look through if you like and see what I've been up to over the last few days. Oh, sorry, over the last few weeks. Um, don't worry about all the junk in my room. Here's one almost full squad of my FJs, my Forsham Jaeger. I can show you. Um, I'll bring them up now. I'm reasonably happy with them. Uh, painting camo is never fun um, these are incredible well sculpted miniatures uh, by um, oh, offensive <laughs> sorry offensive I've got wrong but no I love their miniatures um, really nicely sculpted I'll put one alongside a uh, warlord games one in a second and um, show you the, the difference if there's if you if you want to pick it now um, I use the army painter gloss varnish um, I've found it harder to get testers spray lacquer, otherwise known as dull coat. So I haven't got any around, but I really wanted to get these a little bit less glossy. So I have gone and used um, another spray. Uh, I haven't actually got it in here, so I'll when I cut a bit later, I'll um, I'll bring the spray in at the very end to show you what what this what the lacquer is. Not quite as dull as dull coat. You can see there's a little bit of gloss. Oh, something stuck there. A little bit of gloss on them, but not too bad. Not too bad. And the great thing about it is I can always go over later with testers. Uh, you can't have too many coats of, of varnish. So that was one squad of Forsham Jaeger. They're not quite complete, that squad, because uh, I've got an MG team upstairs. I'd forgotten that I'd when, when I'm, about them when I was painting them before, so they're a bit late, so... I haven't been gloss varnished or based. Here's a second full squad. I think there's eleven when they come from um, when they come from offensive. Let's put that light down a little bit. So uh, I'll take you on a bit of a journey of my painting. I've brought a few other well, I'm down the painting room, so I'll show you a few other examples of my painting. Um, I can knock these out pretty fast now. I could knock a, a squad fully painted in. Oh, probably in a day, um, probably four or five hours maybe. Uh, then I just have to varnish, let that dry, base, let that dry, and then the final spray. So I've managed to knock out these pretty quick. I'm happy with them. Um, I told you my journey before, but uh, I'll, I'll talk about it again in a minute. So these are actually still drying. These are the great little uh, deployment points from um, uh, Two Fat Lardies. I've uh, got two German, two Allied. Each one's got a little sign. And the great thing is, often during the war, they would have been hand-painted anyway. So I was more than happy just to put um, put a few hand-painted signs on there. So they're the Germans. Move these out the way, because I've only got the light in one spot, which is my overhead LED painting light. I brought it down with me, because it's battery-operated. Um, I've uh, got my uh, one more small unit of companies de la Marines for my the French Indian War. As you can see, a little bit of gloss picking up on that. So if I do manage to source some dull coat, I will um, I'll get it and maybe add it to it. So like I said with my painting, all I do with these is base coating, um, uh, mid grey undercoat, uh, metal etch type primer. Um, Basically, just block colouring. Go over with um, with oh, I have to put their hatchets on um, tomahawks. Um, go over with um, army paint to dip, brushed on. And then a base and the base. I, I I used to take a lot more time with bases. Now it's basically a mix. Well, I, I put the PVA glue on by brush, and then I'll put a mix of tea leaves and green flock on. Um, and then I'll use some static grass once once I've shaken the the tea leaves and and 
green flock off. I'll scatter some static grass. So static grass only sticks where it can. So it's going to look like sort of Spartan grass as opposed to a, a lovely lush bowling green. These are the um, Warlord Games. Uh, British regulars. Uh, sorry, British regulars. Um, uh, in field, oh, okay, campaign dress. So I have based them ready for um, to be a skirmish unit. So I play mainly sharp practice. So I base two ways. If they're going to be generally line troops, I'll put them on 20 mil square. And if they are going to be skirmish, I'm going to put them on to uh, 25 mil round. A little bit different, but it's never affected our gameplay. These are the 28 mil, sorry, of course they are, 28 mil um, militia from Warlord Games. They're plastic. Because they're plastic, I uh, put them onto a wooden base, which goes onto a metal washer and then the magnet on the bottom, so they're a little bit rised up, but that's okay. Just to add a bit of weight, once I add that washer, it's really hard to tell the difference between, um, between them without actually you know, giving them a flick. They paint up okay. They're not quite the right dress for sh uh, French Indian War um, with the hunting type shirts. I've been told quite a few times, but in the end, they act as a really good militia. Some of them look okay. I've got quite a few of these paint up already. A few of these, I've made them look as if they've got some French or British jackets as well. Giving these ones a bit of blue because my previous ones I also did up as Coeur d'Ivoire. And I gave them a few red bonnets. I thought I'd add a bit of blue to these guys. And more of my, and I'm pretty sure these are from North Star, my Indians. I've gone and done these ones a little bit more colourful. I've added some purples and oranges and reds after reading that they did have those colours during the French Indian War. Um, my The previous ones I did were a bit more subdued. So all I'll do is I'll just scatter these ones through. So rather than, this won't be a, a full tribe with heavy colour. Obviously this one's got his French leggings on. These will be scattered through, so the, the colour will sort of dissipate. Yeah, I put round magnets on the base of each of my minis, and as a result, I can use any other bits of metal then, like I'm doing now with some uh, tins from Christmas. In the last set, I think I've been over these before, possibly, which are my French Indian War. Oh, I've got some more. They're, they're just more of the um, Warlord games. Warlord Games ones, and these are elite, uh, not elite, sorry, Eureka Miniatures, 28 millimeter French Indian War Highlanders. Uh, I didn't spend too much time, uh, more than enough time on the on the tartan, but I've seen tartan done a lot better. But for my purposes, getting them to the table, I was reasonably happy. Um, so. What I was going to show you is the difference between, and I might have done this before, but who knows, sometimes even, some people may not watch that previous video. Uh, between some of these miniatures. So if you look at the flatter base, you can see the Highlander um, <laughs> is on a higher base. I had to put them on a higher base, otherwise they looked like school children. Um, I've just realised his arm fell off a while ago. It, it was always a crack through it. I keep gluing it. I'm going to end up having to pin it. Um, but you can see there's a big difference in height. I'll try to get right down to that level. You can see the stand is lower on this one, yet he's still oh, you know, a good head's height above the other fella. Likewise, these guys are on higher bases because they were metal. Big difference. In the end, I'm a gamer. Once they go onto the table... They're all just representing, so there's not really anything, you know, I, I don't, it doesn't really matter um, about the height. Previous, I, I did actually put off painting them for a while because that height difference, but I thought, no, bugger it, I'm, I can have some Highlanders. Um, bought this off a of mate ages ago, just as a deployment marker. Never painted it, gave it a prime. Really doesn't, it's that resin, I think JR Miniatures type resin. And it does not take primer well. It took me quite a few different goes. I'll put a primer on. It will just sit there. An hour later, it will just wipe straight off. Um, so eventually, yeah, I found a primer that sort of did an okay job. I haven't spent too much time on it. Um, this is dark coffee granules from 
um, coffee pods. I've got some lighter coffee granules there with some green flocking. And he'll be going onto the table. Um, so I'm actually hand holding this, so it might be a little bit, a bit, bit of a problem. Excuse me, but uh, the tripod is just sitting a bit too high. So I thought I'd just take you for a quick journey through some of my previous painting. Um, I think I've said before, since I was a young fella, I used to, um, since I was about, you know, mid-teens, uh, early teens, I started painting 15mm Essex miniatures. Um, but uh, never played. Ended up getting into Warhammer miniatures. I'm trying to get this light right. Uh, ended up getting to Warhammer, and I used to spend a fair bit of time. I was quite proud of my painting, you know. I used to do eyes and teeth and blood on the teeth, and every little, every little nook and cranny painted, and a fair bit of shading. And I was pretty proud of my efforts. A lot of basing, um, and I guess so. My really main aim of the hobby then was um, there's some inks in there as well. So the main aim of the hobby for me back then was painting. Uh, mainly because I didn't know anyone else. Well, I knew a heap of people had played, and I've said it in the previous one, I went to a few gaming clubs, and they weren't really that um, that welcoming. Here's another one. So I used to spend a lot of time painting minute, uh, painting these guys. This is one of my dwarf slayers. Didn't use varnishes back then. This would have just been sprayed with a gloss varnish, but so there's no, no dip. Um, if you've never painted Games Workshop or Citadel miniatures, I would recommend buying one, even if you're, you're not a fantasy gamer. They're just some of the most incredible miniatures. They're almost like paint, well, they're painting by numbers, basically. Most wargaming is painting by numbers. But the opportunities that these give you to be detailed are just incredible. This is my Leonardo da Vinci type character. He's from the Empire. Um, the He was one of the Empire gunner, part of one of the gunnery crews, I think. And I just loved painting him. I really like the way his beard came out. But I never really got into gaming until I moved here to Tasmania. Uh, ended up buying some Saga Vikings. I don't have them with me. But I'm just looking back over my other minis because I was comparing my my um, American Airborne. These are Warlord games. And I, I remember these were the first minis I just wanted to get to the table. I just went, right, I'm just painting them as quick as I can. So, and I think they really turned out well for World War II in that I basically used minimal palette. But it's the same colours all over. And if you look at the photos or, or, or renditions of, of or, and, and coloured photos now of World War II uniforms, you'll find there wasn't a lot of colour variation. They didn't want to stand out. Um, so just some small, a small palette. Um, and I was watching Jack Sarge's video yesterday. He was talking about using the World War II palette on his, uh, on his um, Dark Age stuff. Because it's basically the same, you know. That, or due to the Dark Ages, it was because things weren't colour fast, and they only had a limited um, source of, of materials to colour. And with World War Two, the last thing you wanted to do was have something too bright, or that something that stood out from everything else. So I've got a. I ended up being able to knock up an entire. At the time, painted for bolt action. I think it was a thousand points or more. Um, I really liked the way they turned out by using a minimal colour palette. Is it historically accurate? Some would argue no. I would argue that I have seen enough different uniforms um, of what correct World War II was to, to, to uh, decide that there was no perfect colour. There was no one colour. Colours changed, colours faded, issue, uniforms were issued all the time. You might be able to look at the patches on elbows, patches on knees, and say, well, that was pre-44 or post-44. I didn't really mind. I was more than happy just to paint in more of a generic uniform. I don't care whether I, I use these guys in North Africa or Italy or, or Europe. It'll be the, I'm not going to paint different ones. Um, and as you said, I took the time to paint. Didn't do the yellow beak, but I took the time to paint the 101st logo. The reason I did these is I absolutely loved Band of Brothers. It was Band of Brothers that got me into World War II gaming. Um, and obviously I had to do these guys. I was not planning on doing Forsham Jaeger, but the, the deal from um, the deal from uh, Offensive was too good to resist. Well, just a quick show you one now. I've got a get fellow who's standing reasonably upright. Um, I'll take a guy with roughly the same roughly the same stance, if you like. Roughly the same legs apart. 
This is offensive miniatures on the left, Warlord games on the right. I certainly wouldn't be looking and going, oh no, they don't match. You could argue that maybe the um, offensive miniatures are a little bit slimmer, but certainly nothing to nothing that would stand out on the table. Um, so in these guys will be uh, meeting on a table with a bit of luck. Anyway, that's it for now. Um, I'll tell you what, I'll give, show you a quick look around my gaming room. It's a bloody mess. Um, this is beneath our house. Uh, cupboard over there with all the old Warhammer stuff in it. That cupboard's full of um, uh, crafting type stuff, like for basing, anything that I can think make. is my books. The table that this should be, it's a uh, six by four gaming table. I really, well, I don't play here. I've only ever played a couple of games here. Um, I go uptown every Sunday. So this now has just become a place where I tend to want to be able to put things. My 3D printer, which I've shown you before. That's where I get some of my um, my houses printed off. If you haven't got one, I'd certainly recommend investing in one. You can save a lot of money. Basically, the further you are away from the US or the UK, the more money you're going to save because it's very expensive to get uh, MDF or... Um, all resin stuff down here in Australia. And this is some of the stuff I use for basing. I've left it out because I've been doing that basing. So um, so that's tea. I said before that on that, that lighter stuff was coffee. This is tea leaves out of a tea bag. Don't use um, regular tea leaves. They're normally a little bit too big. See that spill? I really don't care if it spills. It all adds to a little bit of... Um, this is really good as sort of a bit of a muddy type stuff. And you, afterwards you get a little bit of gloss if you wanted to. This is my mix, tea leaves, uh, it's a mix of brown tea and peppermint tea, maybe a bit of green tea, flocking falls in there, rock falls in there, slightly different one here with more of that cheap greener stuff in there, I never like using that too much, so that goes occasionally into that, and even my static grass, I'm not too fussy about what falls into it, because I can always, now I don't use an applicator, Rub it between the fingers, building up that static. Drop it lightly onto what you're trying to static. Obviously, if you're doing a big area, yeah, applicators might work. But for what I needed for, more than happy just to um, rub it between the fingers to get that static going. And I've never had a problem with it. Some of my hills stacked up. Uh, all my gaming terrain ready to go next time I have a game. Which hopefully won't be too long. Zeppelin from Flames of uh, uh, Wings of Glory. Bit of a everything table and other bits and pieces. Like I said, I'm can get a little bit um, can get a little bit messy, but I'm doing alright, I reckon. Anyway, hope you've enjoyed that. Enough for now. I'll see you next time.